I would I would be amazed that there'd be a Labor politician or a Liberal politician, probably be a lot of Greens, but that would agree with that proposal. Uh, I think you get consensus on that uh, because they all confront the same problem. The issue for that is no point of politicians saying that. It needs the business community to say that. The business community has got to uh, take this up. But, you know, when we had effective reform in this country, it was under Hawke and Keating because we had a business council uh, that actively participated in it. You know, it seems to me that the sort of organisations we have now are really at the margin. You know? I mean, the quickest way to make yourself irrelevant is talking to the Treasurer and say, well, you know, quarter percent of payroll tax. You know, they'll come up with the schemes that I, I came up with many schemes that made you look like you were getting payroll tax, but you know, at the end of the day you weren't really, um, because uh, it was either adjustments as thresholds or um, a temporary relief and focus relief. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't deal with the fundamental problem, um, because if that logic is followed through, governments may have no option other than to look at uh, those very taxes that um, the Commonwealth is saying that we should use more effectively. And look, there's an whole argument about also the Grants Commission, which I don't want to get into, but it is time to reform it um, so it's much more focused on ensuring that the arrangements we have uh, to fund small states and territories uh, are sensible and rational and not uh, dependent on, um, on you know, the buoyancy of the economy. I mean, so you, I, I, actually, I read your, when I read your budget papers, I mean, I love reading the, the section on risk. And, your section on risk is very interesting. It talks about um, your population pressures and um, uh, the fact that that's going to impact on your GST uh, share and um, that also other states' pressures, economic pressures, that impact on your GST. Now, that's not a, a basis for funding your um, essential services. So there's two things. Eliminate things that we shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, and secondly, ensuring that what we do deliver is delivered in the most efficient way with some scope, to use the, the um, trendy word of innovation, uh, but innovation that pays dividends rather than uh, consultant fees. You have time for more? Okay. Julian. Thanks, Richard. Uh, Julian Amos. Um, your uh, speech is um, exciting. Uh, but I end up being wound up in some sort of paradox at the end of it because we think of ourselves as, in the first instance, Australians, but then at a statewide level as Victorians or New South Wales, for example. So the idea of being a unified country or a unitary um, country, I think, defies the reality of how we think of ourselves. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Talking no, about no, financial no, no, arrangements. I understand, but that, but that, <clears throat> so therefore, the idea of centralising uh, tax revenues or whatever will always come across that. They're already um, centralised. That, that barrier of us thinking of ourselves as, as a state. Well, so that's that's one of the that, that's the first part of my parallel. The, the second part, though, is that with the move to more centralised activity by the Commonwealth there is a certain unreality that arises in the Commonwealth bureaucracy about delivery of services at a state level. And I've seen that in a range of activities in the private sector, uh, each of which has a relationship to a public sector, a regulatory framework with the Commonwealth director. We end up in committees and sort of a year-round range of discussion, whatever, no decisions coming. So the idea of centralising um, uh, tax revenues and thereby uh, the power uh, to then deliver a service falls over in the sense of the inability to actually deliver well, service in the region. Well, let me respond. Firstly, they're already centralised. I gave you those figures. Uh, there's been a, an inverse of what the original relationship is. You know, 80% of taxes now are collected by the Commonwealth. Uh, and then they're filtered through a range of inexplicable mechanisms and um, uh, discussion processes to give you each your share. Um, and that's even complicated in terms of the GST on, on the arbitrary nature of the uh, Grants Commission formula. All I'm talking about is saying, okay, um, we collect it anyhow. Um, uh, the key to this is not the tax revenue, it's the responsibility for the service. That's why I started with health. You know, don't, don't worry about the taxes, it's already collected by the Commonwealth and what's it done is divvied out. You know, and, 
we give you a grant here, you have a national competition payment, you have a spend the SPP or you have um, your GST revenue. So it's already happened. It wouldn't take uh, virtually nothing in terms of administration to be able to, uh, to, to do that. So that's not the issue. The issue is getting the Commonwealth, and I think this is a winnable argument uh, because the public thinks it's strange, to accept that it has overall responsibility uh, for funding these systems. And it does, in any event. Uh, the problem is the way it's, um, it's filtered. It, give, it has responsibility for primary health care and it funds uh, partially um, the acute and hospital system itself. But it's all done in a way that doesn't allow accountability, doesn't allow the ability to manage um, your expenses and revenue, and it doesn't allow the ability to innovate in services, and it doesn't provide competition. Um, you know, the Commonwealth, let me say why I'm optimistic about this, the Commonwealth's actually in an embarrassing position at the moment. Uh, they, firstly, they promised they were going to fix the health system before the last election. And uh, everywhere I look, there's people criticising, uh, unfairly, uh, because they tend to take an incident that occurs as a medical incident and use that uh, to, to criticise the, the, the funding of the hospital system or the performance of the hospital system. And it really, two things don't relate. Some, some are obviously errors uh, of judgment or errors of uh, procedure. Uh, but the Commonwealth, nevertheless, is in a position where they said they were going to deal with the problems in, um, in hospitals. So we're in the best position as a community, and certainly you as a business community, to demand that they do what they promised they were going to do. That is, um, take responsibility for this. They've been backing away at a million miles an hour, but they've also, in recent times, been a healthcare commission's report that says precisely the same thing. The only way you're going to get, uh, that's one of their own reports, by the way, uh, this sort of changes to do this. That's why I focus on health. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a zillion frustrations that you have in, in state federal range, as I pointed out, environment, that's one. Education, partly um, disability services, you can go through a list of them. But the big one in terms of the structural problems in our budgets is health. If you want to deal with, remember what I started with, we are not going to have the capacity to fund our health system in the face of an ageing population. And from the report of the Chamber, you're going to be in the worst position in the mainland states uh, on that. Um, you need, uh, very early in the piece, to deal with the responsibility issue. The tax collecting component is already done by the Commons. You know, we, we have an Office of State Revenue, I don't know how there, but what do we collect? Land tax and payroll tax. Uh, that could easily be uh, dealt with uh, through the Commonwealth. You'd abolish, you'd abolish the land taxes or the, 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 the conveyancing taxes, the stamp duties, because they're the ridiculous taxes to have. Um, and you'd look at a, a, a new system of taxation that, um, was much more focused around the central level. Look, you know, you, you end up in a debate about what level should the GST be. I just don't want to get into that. Um, I start from the premise that the overall tax take is, is I think, uh, adequate. I really just want to get rid of the waste that's in there and get rid of governments doing things that they shouldn't be doing um, to focus on what they should be doing, and that is uh, ensuring that the fundamental budgets are stable. We have, and I'm sure it's the same here, we have structural deficits in all of our state budgets. They're unsustainable. We have the Commonwealth uh, because its taxes are, are much more efficient and much more stable. Uh, running surpluses and doing silly things like the stimulus package um, because they have the luxury of doing that. Uh, Michael, uh, I've also enjoyed your comments very much and found myself agreeing with your comments and observations about health. I want to look at a snapshot of one segment of health. In a former life, I was a commissioner of the Tasmanian Industrial Commission and had responsibility for a fair section of uh, different aspects of health, including nursing. And I wonder what your views are that, about this, that when I started uh, being responsible for nursing, the structure was fairly uncomplicated, a nurse actually did nursing duty. Uh, and over the time, with the introduction of career paths and so on structures, we now have uh, nurses, uh, clinicians, nurse managers, uh, and there is a whole bureaucracy. Nurse, nurse assistants. Um, the whole lot. The whole lot, yeah. And it must contribute immensely to the cost of service delivery. And yeah. I sometimes wonder whether that's necessary. I'm worried because I probably don't think it is. And the other part of that question is that the actual delivery of health care 
could be expedited much more efficiently if we've got all these nurses in place to give them some more clinical responsibility and not have this ongoing debate about what a nurse can and can't do.